What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today, have we got something cool for you. Today, we have a gun I've been trying to get my hands on for a long time, and just never got around to it, but I've weirdly been in love with for like a decade and a half. And that's gonna be the Chris Vector. It's so fun. Now, the Chris Vector has gone through a couple of different generations, and this one here is the newest iteration, the 2.1, I believe. It has a lot of interesting features about it that make it really one of a kind. So what is the Chris Vector anyway? Well, it is a PDW style subgun with a five inch barrel and a very unique recoil system called the Super V system. I thought I was the Super V. Now the Super V system was originally introduced in this gun for the 45 ACP in full auto. However, the guns that you can get for yourself today are obviously going to be semi-automatic, and most of them that you're gonna buy today are a nine millimeter, like this one here. The reason for that is because the nine millimeters take the Glock mags. Well, obviously the 45s do as well, but the nine millimeter Glock mags are ubiquitous. They are everywhere, and you can find them at any gun store. And I have like a hundred of these, so I literally have a hundred mags for my Chris Vector already. Now, the Super V system is very controversial because it definitely works differently than a lot of other recoil mechanisms in PCCs. Like blowback operation is the standard operation for 9mm pistol caliber carbines. It's very reliable and cheap and easy to make. However, it's not really ideal because it adds a lot more recoil than you really need. As a matter of fact, most blowback carbines have more recoil than a 5.56 AR. There's also other recoil mechanisms like the CMMG Banshee has a very unique one. The MP5 and JP5 both use roller delayed systems which work extremely well. Whereas the Chris Vector does use the Super V system which is the reason why <laughs> the, the bulk of the gun looks so fat and looks so interesting. Cause there's actually a recoil mechanism that takes the bolt from here and runs down into the grip right here. So it runs up and down and it gives it kind of a downward push when you shoot it making it a very unique but very cool recoil impulse. Some people like that, some people don't like that, but I personally love it. And my wife loved it as well, and she's only 5'2", so if she can shoot it fast, you're really just complaining about nothing. Oh, this is my new lover. I love it. I also had the opportunity to shoot this next to and right after the kel Sub-2000. The kel Sub-2000 is a carbine that weighs about the same amount as this, but it does have the blowback operation. Pretty good. The uh, stock's very uncomfortable. The recoil and pulse is an awful lot. Chris Super V system definitely works. Now the barrel length on this is 5.5, so it's about standard for a PDW. It's five and a half pounds, and it obviously takes any capacity Glock mag that you can get from 17 all the way up to the big boys. You can get folding adapters for the uh, brace system or stock system if you want, which is really cool because then it can fold up into a nice tiny little package and still be very effective in a serious situation, which makes it a pretty fucking phenomenal backpack gun, a truck gun, or anything like that. In the blink of an eye, this thing can be deployed. You can have a very formidable PDW very quickly. Put it in a backpack with some body armor and you have a PDW and armor right away. Now we have a Trigicon MRO on here. It didn't come with that, but it did come with the iron sights, which actually are very cool in my personal opinion. Now personally, I fell in love with this gun the first time I saw it on Future Weapons. For anybody who remembers that show, it kind of dates me a little bit. But there was a guy named Mac on there, and he first introduced this, and they ranked this as the number one CQB weapon in the world at the time of its release. And it always kind of stuck with me, and it always looked super cool. And then I saw it in movies like Total Recall. I played with it in video games like Ghost Recon and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and I absolutely love how the gun looks. And then I got an opportunity to shoot one in full auto and absolutely fell in love with it. The recoil and pulse is gonna be a little bit different in the semi-automatic version instead of the full auto 45. However, in my personal experience, it was a great time. So you get the looks and you get a pretty decent shooting gun. Now, I had a lot of fun shooting the Chris Vector, but we didn't do this as a first shots video like we normally do because I've been having a lot of neck and ear related issues. So we just filmed a video like this. So I hope you like the new format. 
We put 400 rounds through the Chris Vector and we had a really, really good time. Very low recoil with the, with the Super V system. As soon as you get used to it, it's a little bit different recoil impulse, but once you get used to it, it is unbelievably fast. And I would consider this, again, a very formidable weapon for me personally. Uh, the fact that it feeds from the easy Glock mags is another big win. The fact that it looks super cool, like really freaking cool, is another big win. Comes in a lot of different calibers, comes in a lot of different colors, so you can get kind of whichever flavor you want. You can get 16 inch ones if you want, you can get pistols if you want. I prefer the pistol version myself. Uh, it makes it a lot more capable for me in its actual uh, philosophy of use because it makes it a lot more compact. I mean, look at how big this thing is when it's folded. It is really small. And I actually do really like the way it looks. Not only does the fact that it folds in really small, but it's actually pretty slick as well. A lot of the controls don't stick out very much. And we have a magazine release right here, which can be a bit of an issue if you are not holding it correctly. So when you do hold the Chris Vector, make sure you hold it up here like this and you can avoid all the issues because they have the controls right here and here. And I think that's because during the military contract, these were designed to be SBRs and not pistols. And they probably were running vertical grips, which is probably the ideal way to run it. However, it is no issue to just grab up here and do the C-clamp and avoid hitting that bolt release and that magazine release. And once you get a hold of that, the gun is perfectly fine in my opinion. We have a folding charging handle right here, which is relatively easy to use. Comes with a threaded barrel. We did run it suppressed for about 200 rounds. We had no problems at all with subsonic ammo, which is awesome because that's how I prefer to run my sub guns. And some sub, sub guns will work like that and some will not. So I really appreciate that this one does. We have a Surefire Scout on top of here, which does fit. However, I probably would recommend a pistol light simply because of the limited space that you have to work with up here, which is something you're gonna have a problem with with all sub guns, like the MP5K or maybe the CMMG Banshee in the five inch. You're gonna have a limited amount of rail space because you have a limited amount of fucking barrel. So, I mean, you can't really have much more than that. Now, if you're running a suppressor, you could run a extended mount on here, like maybe one of those Thorntail mounts from Haley Strategic, which is what I might try. Uh, because I'll probably run this exclusively suppress because of the tendonitis, or tinnitus, tinnitus, not tendonitis. Although I do have that too, but it's not in my ear. The RL worked really well in my personal opinion. I liked it on the gun so and I'm I. getting more and more used to these. Did you like it? I, I know I you really like this optic. I loved it. My wife really loved this whole setup and, and really uh, talked me into keeping it actually. Because <laughs> a lot of times I get review guns and uh, I begrudgingly sell them afterward to uh, buy more guns. But this one is staying with me. Now the trigger here, is a sub gun trigger. However, it is considerably better in my personal opinion than the MP5. As you can see, we will run the trigger here. Really nice pull. And it's got a quick reset as well. And that allows you to have really quick follow-up shots, which is what you want for a sub gun. Again, I mentioned it would be a great PDW, personal defense weapon. And the reason why it is, is because it's concealable enough and small and compact enough that you can have it on you all the time. If you don't have it on you, it doesn't do you any fucking good anyway. So if you have like an M14 in your car and you can't get to it, it doesn't really matter, right? If you have this in a bag, you're gonna be a lot better. Uh, it also make a good home defense gun. I like pistol caliber carbines for apartment and for close quarter stuff where you don't want a lot of blast. Let's say you have a lot of kids in the house and you don't want to deafen them. You can always throw a suppressor on this and it's gonna be a very, very quiet ordeal. And the burglar is gonna really, really silently regret going into your house. <laughs> As far as the ergonomics go, as I said, there's a bit of an issue with having a lot of the controls up here. So you're gonna have to learn a different battery of arms. Uh, either SBR, put a vertical grip on it, or just simply do the C-clamp. Both of those will work well. Um, the Super V system is very cool. It makes it a little bit different takedown and uh, makes it a little bit different cleaning. But as far as lubrication goes, I literally just sprayed some Slip 2000 in it. Ooh, that sounds sexy. We're 400 rounds in and it had no problems. The trigger guard and pistol grip area is really fascinating. It looks very futuristic. A lot of times when they close off the trigger guard area, it does for some reason make it futuristic, like the styre and stuff like that. Uh, the trigger guard is very large. You can get glove hands in there with no problem. The pistol grip is very ergonomic, which is nice because you can't replace the damn thing. And obviously there is a lot of available aftermarket for the rear end if you want to put a uh, buffer tube system on there or if you want to run it with the sling like the SAS and you want to repel through some fucking windows, you can do that too. Overall, I think it is a very unique and cool firearm. Uh, I'm definitely gonna do a full thousand run review of it. This should be out 
probably in a couple of months. And hopefully you guys like it too. So far it's been very reliable, it was super accurate. It was more accurate than I thought it was gonna be anyway. I mean, we were hitting at 100 yards with no problem and I just didn't expect that because I haven't shot in a while. And I thought I would be a little too rusty to hit those small targets with a nine millimeter PCC, especially considering you get some drop there at 100 yards, but super accurate. I would have no problem using this in any sort of self-defense scenario, which is cool because it comes with the looks. A lot of times I buy a gun for the looks and I'm really hoping for performance and it's nice when it delivers both. Uh, again, it's got some quirks you're gonna have to get used to, but if you get used to them, it's a very reliable, accurate platform, at least so far, and very formidable as well. If you like this video, uh, let me know in the comment section what you want me to see it compared to or if you want a uh, full review. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your Oklahoma shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. Super vagina system? Yeah. <laughs>